Good morning everyone, welcome to Moorabbin Airport. Today is a very exciting day because today I finally get to pull the big red handle and deploy the parachute on one of these Cirrus aircraft. Like in a simulator, not the real thing because otherwise very expensive. Now of course as pilots we're trained for emergency scenarios and we're tested on them fairly regularly as well. But you can never quite understand what it's like to be in a real emergency situation until, well hopefully it never happens to you, but until you're actually in that emergency situation. But there is one way that you can try and get a little bit closer to what it feels like to be in that position and that's in a flight simulator. So this is the full motion sim that they have down here at Avia. It's on six little motors down below which give you all, all the different planes of motion. So the roll, the acceleration and deceleration, any turbulence as well. It can, it can simulate all of that as well. We're going to jump in here today and we're going to do some simulated emergencies. And in particular the one that I'm really looking forward to is when you get a Cirrus aircraft to the point of no return. And the only option you have as a pilot is to pull that chute. And we're going to do that today. Well, it feels pretty much like any other Cirrus aircraft you would have sat in before. The controls are similar. The only difference between what we have in Kilo Juliet November and this sim is that the avionics are based around the Garmin perspective, the Cirrus perspective. Uh, if you've flown a G1000, you'll probably recognize that as opposed to the Avidyne, which we have inside Kilo Juliet November. So that's a slight difference, but apart from that, it's all very familiar. Okay, heartbreak off. So, full power. Static RPM is good. Speed's increasing, 55, 60, 70 knots, rotate. Climbing through 80. And we've lost engine. There's nothing, so it's 500 feet above ground, so we're not gonna pull the cap, so I'm looking for a place to land straight ahead. Trim back for best glide speed. Uh, there's a nice field straight ahead, so I'm just gonna land in that, using flaps, of course. So within the flat range, use that to slow us down. There's a big tree ahead, so we'll just see to the left of that. 50 knots, so I'm just holding it off, holding it off. And break before we get to the tree. Beautifully done. Geez, that happens fast. It does. It does. So this is why we consider takeoff safety brief because things do happen fast. And the whole purpose of the takeoff safety brief is for you to have your intentions front of mind in the event that something like that happens. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So wow, back quick. to the start we go. But there's still there's sorry there's still a hesitation there. The moment the engine goes, there's still it takes your brain a couple of seconds to yes. think. Yes. Am I doing the right thing? But I'm. I was just going straight to the altimeter. Yes. And looking at that. All right. So when you are ready. All right. Gonna roll again. Yes, please. So off the brakes. Full power. Starting off here is good. SP is increasing on both. Do our 500 calls, so 500 feet, flaps are up, fuel pump stays on, caps is now available. So engine failure, oh no, engine's rough running engine, so we're maintaining airspeed, we're still climbing. Rough right now, engine's completely gone not maintaining airspeed, not climbing. So this is a caps pull because we're between 500 and 2000, so I'm pulling the caps. First time I've done that. And the aircraft will descend at 1,700 feet a minute. 
and then I can do my shutdown checks at this point. Is that correct? So fuel off. I can turn my fuel off. Yep. yep. Okay, so fuel comes off, fuel pump off. And I shut down. Mixture, um, mixture cut off. Magnetos off. And then this is where you're briefing your passengers for impact. So sitting up straight, hands on lap. Wow. And we're down. And down we are. Okay, so now we're so, down. But so what's happening? We're moving backwards, so we're being dragged backwards because of the parachute? Correct. So the parachute is now caught in the wind, it's like one big kite, and it's literally pulling the aircraft. Now in reality that won't happen because the wheels will have collapsed, yeah. but it's an interesting point. You want your passengers to be upwind of the parachute so they don't get tangled. Okay, on this particular exercise you're taking off on runway 23 at Mangalore. Okay. The wind is 270 degrees at 20 knots. Do a climbing left hand turn and once you're over the top of the airfield, I want you to set course of 010 to Shepparton on climb to 2500 feet. So full power again. Starting up in, it's good. Air speed's increasing on both. These are good, 70 knots. So coming up to 500 feet, so 500 feet, flaps are up, fuel pump stays on, caps is now available, it's a left turn. So I can see the aerodrome there on the left now. So I keep the turn going, so I'm overhead. So three and a half thousand, just levelling out, three and a half, got engine problems. So let's go through our check. So engine tank across, fuel pumps on, throttle to its full range. Set up the glides with their mixtures, not coming through, working up alternate air on. None of that's happening, so I'm pretty confident I've got an unrecoverable engine. My oil pressure is right down and my temperature is right up. So I'm going to try and get us back towards the airfield, which is behind us now. We've got the wind coming from 270, so I'm into the wind at the moment. So I'm actually better off to go this way around. So I can just shut this down, fuel pump off. Turn my fuel off, the switches would come off. Put the runway to my right. Get some flaps out, because I think I'm going to make that. In fact, now I think I'm a bit high. So I get second stage of flaps. So I'm briefing the passengers just in case the impact is hard. Done all my shutdown checks. Oops. Don't want to over control at this last moment. Also don't want to stall it in, so I keep heading down. Ooh. Getting jittery because the controls are not very effective. Wind's obviously from the right. Ugh, hardest landing. Bring it to a stop on the runway. And we're down. Perfect. Shut down. Cool. Excellent. And what was the best decision you made? I think when I was just, when I had the airport almost behind me, it was the direction of the turn that I made. Correct, in. correct. And most mm. people wouldn't think of that. Mm. They would instinctively go left. Well, so that's why briefing the wind before mm. takeoff is such a useful thing. So I have no autopilot. Ahars has gone now. Oh, everything's going. Primary flight instruments have gone now, so I need to go to my secondary instruments. Ah, so that's brought it back again by resetting the circuit breaker. Got a stall warning, which means we've lost our airspeed indicator, so my pitot heat. Man, that's very, very disorienting. You don't know what to trust. So, so tell me, Steph, what did you get out of that? Um, really, really useful experience, first of all. I think the main thing that I learned from myself 
is I'm taking, I'm taking more time than I thought I would to actually go through my procedures. Things move very fast, so I think I'm, I need to speed up in troubleshooting and then actually making a decision. And that's one of the things that every pilot should look at doing. You need to make sure that you brief yourself on a abnormal scenario, mm. an emergency scenario. That's why we do takeoff safety briefs. And so many people have gone through their training and never thought that in a single engine you'd ever do a takeoff safety brief mm. because things will happen quicker than what you anticipated. And when you've got the stress of, oh my goodness, you know, the adrenaline suddenly going racing through you, mm. you must have that decision already made for you. Yeah. So we've been fortunate today because we've got this wonderful simulator that's actually, that we can actually train in. Mm. But there's still nothing wrong with doing desktop training. Desktop training is a wonderful thing because it allows you to put yourself in the comfort of your own home to sit there and come up with scenarios and work through different scenarios and ask yourself, how would I manage that successfully? Grab your instructor, hop into a simulator anywhere and practice that. And all of that information and all that training is just going to allow you to have that edge in case that you ever, and should I hope, that you never need it, but should you ever need it. Thanks to Avia, by the way, they um, lent us the sim for today. Um, you can try it out yourselves as well. I'll put a link down below, uh, fly with Mike in the sim down here as well. It's, it's well worth doing. It's really useful training. I've learned a lot and it's good fun as well. Mm. It's good fun because you get to do so many things in there that you never a, want to, or if you have to, you're probably only ever going to do them once in your flying career. So do them a few times here, fly with Mike, give it a go. It's really good. Well done. Thanks, mate.